I know all this wasn't necessary and nobody will know, but the amount of time I spent on clapping was absurd to get one good clap. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another episode of A to Z. Actually, not just another episode, a very special episode of A to Z. What you guys don't know is we filmed this on Thanksgiving. So it's Thanksgiving. So happy late Thanksgiving for those of you who aren't here right now, which is nobody because I can see how many people are here. But we appreciate you nonetheless for watching it later. Uh, if you don't know, for some reason you decided to hop in on the holiday special. Um, I'm Zero Remsen. I'm your resident Yang. That means I'm the positive, happy-go-lucky one. And to my right bottom is Aaron Chase. He is our resident Yin, the real, the, the actual, the factual, the, the more, uh, every time I want to say narcissistic, but it's pessimistic. And together, we have a similar mindset, but from two vastly different sides. And together on this podcast, we talk about our thoughts and, you know, things happen. Today, Aaron once again has things. So take it away, Aaron. I'm going to do my best to not be a negative fuck this whole time. Because That's fine. Whoops. Th- I, I hate Thanksgiving. It is the worst you holiday. Hate I, hate I wonder why. For yeah. those of you who have no context here, Aaron doesn't have great family things. So the <laughs> odds that he wouldn't like Thanksgiving is not a surprise to me. It's the mixture of the family stuff and the food. You don't like the food? Oh, yeah, you're not a food person. Not at all. Not at all. So every it's it is hellish, and it's even it's made even worse, coupled with everything going on. Um, yeah. And they they've already fucking pissed me off. So I'm I'm, I'm like we're, like are you even going over there? I just assumed you'd go ahead and like not go <laughs> like. Just I'm going. We're inside. we're gonna be outside at completely different tables in the backyard. Like we're gonna be really far away from each other. Um, we'll see how it goes. But I'm not. I'm not gonna be there for any longer than like an hour and a half. What What is the? Com- I know this is a weird way to put this, but like, what is what is the reason you feel you have to go? He don't look edible, so definitely not a food person. That was a, 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 a comment from our live comment section. A Jonathan Draws said that one. Can't take credit for that stellar joke. What is the – say it again. Why do you want to go? Why are you even going? Because not going creates an even bigger headache for longer. Mm. So. Okay. It's it, this is why I'm excited to not be in the state anymore to like be gone because yeah. you know they're not gonna expect me to buy a plane ticket to come out for an hour and a half and then leave, but in this situation it's like the, the thing that's just how I've navigated my life is de- in terms of dealing with them is what is gonna give me the least headache and it's like mm. these are these are mentally unstable people and so. Okay. What, what, what would happen is people would be like, well, Aaron, just say no. Just fucking tell him no, bro. You don't have to do what they're telling you to do. And it's like, you don't understand. These are crazy people who will continue to badger me and bother me and get into my life the more I don't comply with the bullshit. And just fucking insane. I don't even... Ugh. Like... Should I, okay. should I keep going? Yeah, no, I mean, hey, speak your truth, oh, bro. Thanks. So, like, for Christmas, I've been trying to tell my mom, my grandma, my, I'm trying to tell them, like, I don't want anything. Don't get me anything. Don't give me anything for Christmas because it's just going to be used against me later. That's like, mm-hmm. it's like anything involving money, anything involving gifts, it's not done. This isn't the fucking, what is it? Any, you know, those, those Christmas specials, a wonder, it's not a wonderful life or anything yeah. like that. It's not pure. It's like, it's used as bargaining chips and mm-hmm. that completely fucks with the spirit of Christmas in my opinion. And so I tell my mom, like, I don't want anything. You don't need to get me anything. And then she's like, no, we have to get you something. And so I'm, and so she's like, tell me what you want. And I'm like, all right. So I, I say a thing. I can't remember what it was, but incentive. Thank you, John. Um, so I say like, I want this. And she's like, all right, what else? I'm like, 
this. Okay, what else? It's like, fuck, all right. And then I, I come up with uh, a straight I, uh, I wanted to get a straight razor for, like, shaving and stuff. And my uh, mom, can your mom give me something? If you, fuck it, I'll do whatever it takes to get them to leave me alone. Um, <laughs> so I was like, can I get, a, a, can I get like, a, a straight razor, like a shaving kit, right? And um, so... I, te I, I text her that, and then she's like, well, show me a picture. And I take a picture of it, or uh, a screen cap. And then she says that if I try to use that, I will slit my throat and die. So oh. so she's not going to get me that. It like, it's, I'm a 29-year-old man. What the fuck? The straight, <laughs> that's funny. Jonathan said, is the straight razor really for shaving? I don't know. <laughs> His mom got the same brain, and I'm like, "What? How hard do you have to shave?" To I think the difference is that like Jonathan's implying that I'm going to commit suicide, and my mom just thinks I'm a fucking idiot, and I don't know, I don't have the <laughs> mobility to <laughs> shave my face, not, to not slice your throat open. Yeah, and who shaves here? I, I yeah, I'm boss. <laughs> you shave, you shave like this. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just Sweeney Todd, black version. I... Okay. So basically, all I'm trying to do is stay present and mm. and wait for this to be over. Does your mom want high achieving Chinese daughter? Yes, actually, I think my mom uh, doesn't like men. I think she hates men, and I think she's really angry that she ended up with three boys. Dun, 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 have you seen these videos that they've been popping up on my timeline uh, on YouTube? They're like curb your and then insert a thing here. And it's like clips from like different shows and different things, but it's not, it's reality. It's like reality TV shows, like the judge Judy type shows or the Kardashians or whatever. And then like, they'll take those really awkward moments and they're like one minute clips. And then it'll be like the thing. And then the awkward thing will happen and they'll just start playing that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're um, great. But yeah, Except, that's yeah. that's what's going on. I'm just like, th today is not my day right now. And so I'm just trying to maintain. So you, the holidays are never fun. <laughs> the holiday, you, have you ever had a good Thanksgiving or no, Christmas ever? No, no, no. You poor baby. No. <laughs> you poor thing. I, look, I love the holiday season. Okay. I love the holiday season. I love the Christmas specials. I love the lights. I love that it gets colder. I love all of that stuff. It's the family the part. Though. Everything else is fine. What's up? I hate the cold. Everything else is fine. But yeah, but I'm from California, which, yo, oh, then this is what makes me so excited for Chicago. Like, okay. the idea of seasons, I know it's going to suck when it's cold, but it's going to be something eh. different. Well, <sighs> It's well, that's the thing. I was born and raised in Missouri, and it's like, yeah, it sucks when it sucks, but like, it's it, every it's always rougher wherever you think you're going. Like, it's like, oh, that's gonna be bad, and then you get there, and it's like, you, you figure it out, you get yeah. used to it. I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Chicago because this time next year, hopefully, hopefully, I will be out of state. I'm not gonna be dealing with this, I'm gonna be in a completely different environment, I'm gonna have snow. For my first Christmas, I've never had snow. Like, oh yeah, I <laughs> am so fucking pumped for that. So I'm just mentally battening down the hatches. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna try to be quiet because, like, it. I haven't been around my family in person post COVID or mm. pre mid COVID. I haven't. Be careful in Chicago. I heard Jesse Smollett had issues up. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't get I just won't get a uh, subway at 3 a.m. during a hurricane and I'm sure I'll be all right. Um but uh I'm just going to try to go there. that's what it is. They they haven't seen me. They don't know the changes I've made. They don't know just how blunt I've kind of become and mm -hmm. how fed up I am with everyone and everything. So yeah. hoping they just don't talk to me. If they start talking to me, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're going to have a problem. That's not going to happen. That's not, there's, there's no world you walk in, they just, <laughs> you go over to the table and then wait and then <laughs> time for dinner and they're just like, and then, and then you leave. There's no, this is where like the part of me that's like not 
every like it's it's the that's the voice of everybody else is like like i'm gonna go over and my biggest hope is that nobody says anything to me it's like there's no world where that happens aaron you might as well not go <laughs> it's like it's like if your friend was like you know i just made a suit out of gasoline and I think I'm going to go to the campfire tonight. I think I'm going to go and I'm going to sit next to the campfire and hope it doesn't get on me. <laughs> and, and the way they explain it is like, well, listen, if I don't do this here, then I have to go to a fire building and I have to walk through the fire building in my gasoline outfit. And it's like, it doesn't matter what I do. We're like, no, don't do it. Have you seen our friend Martin? No. You've never seen our friend Martin? No. Uh, classic. Okay. Classic black movie, I feel like. Essentially, it's um, it's a cartoon where this kid, he, like, finds... They go to visit uh, Martin Luther King's house, and he finds this watch on his table, and he, like, rewinds the watch, and it sends him back in time oh. to, like, when Martin Luther King was a little kid, and he hangs out with, like, teenage Martin Luther King, so, like, and then he um, travels to, like, throughout as Martin Luther King gets older. Basically, so, every yeah. special during February... That's that happens in the Proud family. I'm pretty sure that happens in uh Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, except the but in the Proud family, she goes back in time and is with her friends. Mm. And this one, he literally hangs out with Martin and then he saves Martin because he knows what happens to Martin and he's like, I'll save you. So he brings him to the present. And because he saved Martin Luther King, everyone's still super racist. So his white friends aren't his friends anymore. Yo, and have then, you seen do you watch the Boondocks? Of course I watched the Boondocks you up seen... until season four. Mm. Have you seen the episode with Martin Luther King Jr.? Oh, of course I saw the episode with Martin Luther King Jr. Shifted niggas. All I see <laughs> is <laughs> niggas. It's so good. <laughs> oh, so it's good. so good. I, I also love the, like, boneless rib sandwiches. What will they think of next? It's so good. Oh, um, yeah, it's great. So, yeah, oh, yeah, um, holiday. No, the holidays, I, I love the time. It's, what I came to realize is that my family has, they, they inadvertently ruined everything ever. <laughs> <laughs> everything, yeah, let me, thing as well. <laughs> the overarching noun of my life. Let me elaborate. I'm going to elaborate on this. Okay. Okay. I used to Please think do. I used to think I hated traveling, like in airplanes and stuff. Like I, I thought I hated it. But what it was was every time I traveled, my family was there and made it miserable. And yeah, I I used to think that like I hated Thanksgiving, for instance. I hate Thanksgiving. But after this bullshit, I'm going to come home and have Friendsgiving, where. Yeah. It's going to be me and my, my girlfriend, my roommate. And yeah. that's going to be chill. I'm going to drink wine. No one's going to be like, you having turkey, Aaron? None of that shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, but, but I've hated Thanksgiving my whole life because I was dealing with my family. I used to, like, Christmas was a mixture of excitement and, and anxiety. Obviously, I'm a kid. I'm excited to get presents and toys and all that stuff. But I'm not, ex like, I couldn't enjoy opening it. I couldn't, like, have fun because I was just having my mom, my grandma stare at me while I was doing it. And then eventually huh. someone would get, I would get screamed at about something eventually during the day. I couldn't enjoy <laughs> it. Do something. <laughs> yeah, there was going to be something. I couldn't enjoy my birthday because I remember, I remember, like, I remember being in elementary. Why were you born? <laughs> I'm not here of you still being alive. I wish it was that blunt, and then at least I wouldn't have been confused. Um, so, like, just so then extrapolate that to everything. Everything they were always around, so it felt like everything sucked. Yeah, and so like I'm just, I am just staying present. I'm staying calm. I'm really so Again, all of these things, it's always really surprising that you never took any of the classic outs. Like most kids, if they really hate their family, college is like a, I'm getting out of here, whatever it takes. And they go to like a different state. Yeah. And then they just live in that state forever. But you waited until now. <laughs> to, I, to can ex the I can explain that too if you want. Okay. I was thinking about that too, and and it's because of 
it's uh it's it's why i have this fucking um helper intuition it's why i want to help kids and shit because okay it's like all right so i i live at my house since infancy until going to school mm -hmm. my house is filled right. with crazy people so i okay. go to school with behaviors that don't seem normal right and people don't handle normal well, especially in 1990, whatever. So I'm right. going to school and I'm behaving in a way that is probably not seen as normal. So people are treating me different on top of being black and they're treating yeah. me different. And then I go home and my, my family won't let me become independent in any way. Like that's, that's what I mean about the, the, the razor and shit. Like they yeah. will force themselves into every single thing that I'm trying to do. So I never get the chance to develop my own independence. So then, you, what's up? Just, just to insert here. Yeah. And this is, again, with all the love in my heart, I say this. Yeah. Do you recognize your part that you play within that dynamic? Yes. I say that that, I think that that comes into play in your 20s. I think that, first of all, I think when you're 18, you're still a kid, if I'm being real. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I give you, I give most people up till 25. That's fair. So imagine, this is the way I describe it. Like, when you're a kid, you have no autonomy. So, yeah. so this is, like, I didn't have it. I couldn't be like, yeah, fuck you, mom, and then go move out or whatever. Like, I'm stuck. And so this is years of people hammering down anxiety and depression and issues with self-perception, taking, stripping away any sort of independence of learning how to do things. So then when you get to your 20s, yes, I recognize that this is, the, by, by like 20-something, this is your decisions that you're making now. You're an adult, yeah. and you're just going to have to figure it out, which I did, and I'm doing. But, right. but it's like, I'm having to figure it out after being, after being given no tools. So like, mm. when, when kids are raised, they're taught like, well, here's how you make friends. Here's how you do such and such. Oh, uh, here's how filling out mail or whatever the fuck. They yeah. wouldn't let me do any of those things. So by the time you're of age to be doing those things, you don't know what the fuck to do. I would ask a lot of questions, but then people would be like, what the fuck, Aaron? You don't know how to do this? And it's like, no, they didn't fucking help me. And now you're not helping me. So I can't get anywhere. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Does that make sense? That makes sense. And again, with all the love in my heart. Go for it, yeah. Do you, do you think part of, again, to, if anything, I would say an, an extra layer of that is also because your family, like you said, you were weird put into normal situations is even weirder. Again, all that stuff. Like the people that you were around, do you think there's any way that your brain took the moments where not your parents, not your, not your family, mm -hmm. where the people who are going like, you don't know how to do this? Like, how do you not know how to do this? That they just meant it in the like, we're genuinely confused and yeah, we're going to make fun of you. But that was interpreted because you've only ever gotten it from the judgment way. Yeah. That you could have taken them. Those were moments where people would have genuinely helped you. Yes, it's going to come from a place of like, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I've done stupid stuff. I was just talking to my friend earlier this morning about how I microwaved, like, I microwaved non-microwavable plates. Like, because the way that I always cooked for myself is I would just put it on a plate. Right. And all of our plates in our house never, like, they never messed with the microwave. Then I went over to my college friend's house one morning. We all slept over at his house. And it was just like after a party or whatever. And I was like, I'm going to make bacon this morning. I'm going to be a good, like, friend. And I'm going to make all my friends breakfast. And I went into the kitchen. And I started making bacon. And I put it on the plate. And I put it in the microwave. And then I waited. And I went to go get it. And not only was the bacon burnt. So, like, already, it's like, it's a wash. But then the plate itself, like, had burnt the whole, they were like, whole. it was, it was trash. You made a pipe bomb. Yeah. And yeah. then I walked out to the, they were like, what happened? I was like, I tried to make bacon. They were like, you used a plastic yeah. plate? I was like, yeah, I didn't know. And it's, a, it is like, yeah, I got it for the next couple, like, hours. But, yeah. like, you take lumps and now I know, don't put that in the thing. So, I would say that it's, it's a mixture. It was a mixture. I think that there were, and this, and this is coupling that I am a black kid in a racist white neighborhood. So like, yeah. 
it makes it even more difficult. Well, I mean, like when you got away, like, yeah, every, again, everything up to, like, are you I talking about say, college? Yeah, I'm talking about college. I, I assume that's, that's my first assumption is when people would start to be like, when you would do something that was like off and they would be like, you don't know this. I figured that would, if they didn't fix it when you were younger, it would still come up when you were in college. So I figured your college friends or your college buddies is when you would. So what happened was I went to a college that was all about, I call it a uh, Karen feminism hmm. where it's feminism, but spoke focused specifically on white women. If we're being honest, you know what I mean? Got it. Okay. It's like no one else met everyone, the patriarchy and men and other, yeah. but it's about us. It's like those types of people and okay. Chicano stuff. Uh. So I'm coming from a place of shit family, shit racist neighborhood to college where the only people that matter are white women and Hispanic people. And so yeah. that also got worse. And by the way, this isn't like a blaming thing. I recognize that on in some level, I needed to take initiative and make decisions on my own. Yeah, but you are. It's, it's that, it is that dichotomy where I, I go back and forth with the victim blame mentality. I don't think victims are 100% angel innocent. Yeah. But I do, I do completely agree with the idea that's like, what choice would you have had? Like where, in what world would these things have not worked out the way they were given the building blocks, building a house on sand that's on the side of a cliff <laughs> where the who is like hitting it constantly is like, I wonder what's going to happen to that house. It's yeah. like, it's going to fall. The odds that it doesn't fall is so low. It's kind of the same thing as like people who come up in low income neighborhoods. It's like, yes, do you have the possibility to pull yourself out of low income? Absolutely. But the way that society makes it sound is like you just got to tighten your bootstraps. You just got to try your hardest, just really work harder and then you'll get it. And it's like, sometimes it doesn't matter. More times than not, it doesn't matter how hard you put the idea of hard work when you're surrounded by a certain level of like your friends, your family, like everything externally is telling you this is where you are and this is where you're going to be and nothing matters. Like it, my friend described to me a thing, um, he was because he came up low income and NBA rags to riches. Yeah. It's like, those are special cases. Like literally that's the only way those kids think they got a way out is like music and sports. Yeah. But like, Everybody who isn't in those situations, like there's a lot of other jobs. There's a lot of other things you could do that isn't just dancing for the white man, you yeah. know, <laughs> like, and, but like, because like there it's again, this is where we get into like systematic stuff. It's like, because everybody's saying like, you can be whatever, but the only dreams that you've ever seen work from those areas and the only ones that are pushed are those, then it seems like what you're really telling them, like you're molding the dream at a baseline. Is like my dreams. I didn't have the whole world. I had like four or five options, and I had to pick which one of those dreams I work really hard to make come true. And it's very meta the idea that like you don't even think you have a dream. <laughs> the cat getting in it. Yeah, well, let me get her. Um, oh, it was kitty news. Yeah, so I did have. I I I can tell the difference in hindsight who was helpful and who wasn't though. So. Mm -hmm. There were, I had moments, I had little blips of people coming in and being like, hey man, here's some help. Let me throw you a bone real quick and then leaving. And so that's, it's, it's like, and on top of that, like, a, a you know how you're saying, um, well, why, why are you even going? Right. And I explained yeah. some other, the other reasons are, hey Harrison, the other reasons are, this is my family. And that's mm. also hard. I don't want to despise my family. <laughs> I don't want to feel this, this level of anger towards them, specifically my grandmother. Um, right. And it's like, I plan on leaving by next year, hopefully, is if everything can mm. go in line. I plan on getting the fuck out. So this genuinely might be the last time they, they, right. this could be happening, right? And... And so keeping that in mind as well, that's something that's even more complicated. And you hear people yeah. like, like when I talk to William Henderson, the way his upbringing was like, fuck them, whatever, and leave. <laughs> but, yeah. but black people, I think it's fair to say, have a bit more of a uh, family collectivist dynamic 
Yeah, I could I could say that I un, I think it's more of a this is gonna be hot take. Uh, I think it's more of a like what situation you grew up under. So if you were given love and affection and all that stuff when you were young and all that stuff, it's kind of yeah. The black dynamic is like very tight knit because we're like surviving. Yeah, and it's like we can get through this, but in a situation where like you're given all the love and all the affection and you're not like, we got to get through this. It just is that pure human connection. Then you have the, the anonymity, not anonymity, the, um, the control, the ability to be like, Mm-pum. like, because, because you gave me a good baseline where I know self care, I have the luxury of being like blood is only blood. And that's just a, a thing that we have, you know, yeah. where it's, it's this weird it's the same thing as like a rich kid it's like who's more likely to like disown their family like like is it the rich family or is it the middle class or is it the low class like right it's kind of dynamic as well but yeah generally if we're talking like race then yeah black people got that because you know where our people and so it's it's a lot of different feelings and emotions and all this stuff and i would say at this point the now I am far more autonomous. Zero, what is your advice on comic writing? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. I'll, uh, we'll talk to it right now. We're, we're talking about Aaron's family. Do you know it? This is a comic who came to the open mic recently. Uh, oh, she broke, he broke up. He'll be back. Uh, this is, this is uh, Lee. I think it's Leland, L-I-L-I-N, I think. She's a comedian. She's she had a pretty nice set. Uh, she came to the open mic, and so you know she saw me do my thing, and I had a good set that night. So overall, just real quick, and then we'll get back into Aaron. My overall advice on writing comedy: do it, and then go on stage. Like people will let you know what's funny, and then once once they laugh, keep that. Throw out the stuff that they don't laugh at. That's pretty much it. There you go. Um, you were saying. Um. Fuck, what was it? What was, uh, the, oh, my, right like now I have autonomy. Yeah. So I know that the decisions I'm making right now are my decisions. I would say yeah. starting since, since, um, since that, the, you know, the domino, the thing, a person I saw on Netflix, the whole, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to, I don't hate repeat. I hate repeating that story. Because it's, pa- it's yeah. so far in the past at this point. But yeah, yeah. I would say that moment was like the, okay, I'm making my decisions now. Right. And so from there was when that building block started. So right now I'm making the decision to go there. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, weird weird question. Yeah. Unless you, I'm sorry, I, I look, it looked like you had another thought you wanted to get out. I was just going to ask, worst, what, is, what was your worst thanksgiving or christmas or birthday which what which like pull a memory out of the old memory trauma basket just sift around down in there <laughs> really dig down deep what's the what's the one you would say sticks out the most i won't even say worse but like sticks out the most immediately i can't remember how old i was but i do remember thinking i was like i was a kid i was in elementary school i remember thinking i just want to have one good day I kept remembering, I was thinking that the entire day. I was like, I'm going to have one good, happy day. And and it's going to be Christmas. I I know I'm going to make this happen. And something happened. I can't remember what it was, but I remember being in my grandmother's garage and screaming. Just a lot of yelling and screaming and arguing about something. I remember I was in trouble or I was being... I don't even know if I was in trouble or if I did anything wrong, but I remember being screamed at and I think I was in the garage crying and I was thinking like, I just want to have one good day. Why can't I have one good day? (laughs) As an elementary schooler. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I just want a day where I can go have nap time and come home and watch Saturday morning cartoons. And I thought Christmas was going to be that day. Yeah, no, man. Like every single day was what was going on in my head of like, just one, just give me one, just give me one that I, I, it was, it was terrible. And 
that was that's was like every day okay what would you say at, and this one's even harder best one thanksgiving christmas or birthday either either you can choose from all three holidays thanksgiving is a wash it's a wash thanksgiving's a wash you haven't had a single like chill thanksgiving not even not an arguing thanksgiving i will give you you got into it but by the bar of all the thanksgivings you didn't have one that was like we didn't yell as much that year we, we really we only talked about like the food sucking um no because he run away from your own family no, no he's still he, he's trying he's in the process yeah um <laughs> um when it comes to Thanksgiving, like uh, just being around them is an anxiety provoking experience. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to, to pick, especially Thanksgiving, because they're all there. It's kind of hard to pick a time when it didn't feel shitty because just yeah. being around them feels shitty. Um, yeah. But what was I saying? Um, but I, I guess. I don't know. I would have to think about it. You and in the meantime, I'll tell you mine. All right, go <laughs> um, for it. My, my best question. See, this is the yin yang. Yeah. <laughs> he can get very easy to like the good one. Actually, I can't think of my bad Christmas. There yeah. was I've only had memory one bad Christmas. So I'll start there and then I'll go happy. My worst Christmas wasn't a family thing. My family's amazing. They're dope. And this is pretty much the core of our things. Yeah. Is that my raised me with so much love and affection that I think I am and this is it feels like I'm gonna tell a joke it's not a joke okay I legitimately think that I'm meant to change the world in some capacity I don't know how and I don't know what or why but I definitely feel like I am a gift to this world and I think it's because my family loved me so much <laughs> that I have this like if it wasn't for the fact that I genuinely in my soul care about people, I would be a narcissist. Yeah. Like I'm a joke narcissist where it's like, huh, I think I look good. Like I'm conceited, but I don't get into like, I'm the only thing that matters and oof everybody else and like gaslighting stuff. Uh -huh. You're so lucky. Oh, I'm learning that more and more every time I talk to anybody and also specifically Aaron. <laughs> like, <laughs> You never know how good your family is until you've been talking to Aaron and you recognize, oh, they could have me up. Yeah. <laughs> they could have ruined my whole existence. So Christmas, my worst Christmas was, I don't know what I caught. It was some, it was some sickness. I don't know what it was. Mm. I'd like to say th flu, but I never threw up and I didn't like poop bad or anything. It's just, I felt horrible. Like I had the worst headache. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like hot and cold. And like I woke up Christmas morning feeling horrible, but like it was time to open gifts. And it was me. And, it was the me and my mom portion of it. Like she knew I wasn't I wasn't feeling great. So she knew like coming over and putting on the song and dance for everybody when they come over was probably not going to happen. So I got up, we went into the living room and she had um, this will date it. Uh, she had gotten me my Kingdom Hearts fingerless gloves, which I wore throughout the first freshman year of college. And then those got turned into rags and I couldn't anymore. Uh, and she got me the um, Because of the Internet album. And that was dope. And I was like, oh, yeah, freaking, yeah, <laughs> Bino, <laughs> Bino. But I couldn't. I was just like, yeah. Like, I couldn't give the reaction that I wanted to give because I was so dead physically. And then I went back to my room. And I just got in my like covers and I just fell asleep. And then I remember people coming in and like my family still came over because it was our time to host. And like you would hear a bunch of what do your parents do? Zero. I'll, I'll tell you later. Um, my my family was in the living room. And so I would hear loud noises. And all I was thinking is like, if everybody could just be quiet, like I'm like, I'm like, my head is pounding. I know it's Christmas and we're, you guys are not dead, but I'm dead. So if you guys could not. And then everybody would come in like. It was as if I was dying because people would come in in sections. They wouldn't come in as like a whole family. It would be like one person would go, hey, Merry Christmas. Uh, how you holding up? I'm like, I'm still dying. They're like, okay, well, hope you feel better. And then that person would leave and then two more people would come in and go, hey, Merry Christmas. And I'm like, 
guys, I appreciate the affection, but also, like, again, less noise, the better, the less touching me. And then by the time I was ready and up, oh, he's getting stuff. I, I'll answer your question now, Lynn. Uh, my parents, I, my dad runs the barbershop and also sells cars. And my mom works for the government, uh, helping people in essentially IT. She's like a higher IT person. Um, but yeah, they're not together. They're totally different worlds. And I don't under, honestly, it's another reason I think I'm lucky because I'm an accident, but like I 100% am okay with that because my parents should never have been together. When I see their personalities, I'm like, yo, how did you guys even date, let alone have me? Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the feeling I have about, um, that's the feeling I have about my mom and my dad of like, well, how did you, why did you guys even interact with each other? You're so yeah. different. How, how did you convince her to have sex with you, sir? I don't understand. No, it's, <laughs> it's the reverse. I don't know. I don't know what they were like. But regardless, um, re regardless of all of this, that's why I'm just trying to stay present. Like, I'm just, all, all I'm thinking is like, just get through the day. And then mm -hmm. hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, next year, I'm going to be in Chicago. I'm not going to have to deal with this shit. Yeah. And yeah, it's not even, that's the thing. It's not even a day. It's like a couple hours. Yeah. If that, I don't know. What is, what is the usual like amount of time that you have to be around? I mean, it's COVID. So this is kind of, who knows, you know, that's, that's another part of it is like, how many people are you guys allowed to have? Cause we were originally going to do a friend's giving of like going over to my roommates, coworkers, but they had to cancel because of COVID. Yeah. So now it's just, me and it's just the roommates. It's like, um, um, it's going to be, there's going to be like three separate tables and it's going to be me, my girlfriend, my brothers, my cousins on one table, then old people on the other table. So hopefully they just don't even interact with me. I'm like, that's so much. I, I, me and my other friend were talking about this. It's like, don't get me wrong. I love my family. I do. And I'll probably call them on FaceTime or something to check in. Yeah. But like at that point, it's too much like, if we're doing that much to make it happen, it's like, well, then we shouldn't be, because it's dangerous regardless. I Let's agree. Let's just video that. We, I, have, we have the technology. I agree. <laughs> I 100% agree. But my family is also completely technologically illiterate. So that makes sense. So it's that, good. That's dramatic. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I'll be fine. I think the reason I'm in the headspace I'm in is, this is going to be the first time I have to be around them in mass yeah, since all of this has started. And I think yeah. I hand, I'm, weirdly enough, I'm handling it very well. This person's annoying. Sorry. I'm not used to, <laughs> I'm not used to people. Like I know people get in the chat every now and again and we love Harrison or whatever. <laughs> this person's fucking annoying. <laughs> okay, Jesus me, Christ. Me, yeah. This is the yin yang. So here's what's happening, Lynn. It's not. It's it's kind of you, but it's not you. It's um. It's the thing of like. No, it's her. Usually, <laughs> usually when we do this, it's uh, so first. First things first. He's very clearly. This is a very tense time for him. So so this isn't like the best time to be like, oh, here's a bunch of things for, his, and especially when they're all coming at me and he's spread. He's like talking about like traumatic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Zero, what do you do for like money? <laughs> like, it's 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 like when you're you know when you're you know when you're at Thanksgiving and they put you at the kids' table and there's that the youngest kid on the high chair who's just like Do you like Martinelli's? Is Martinelli's alcohol? Do you drink Martinelli's? <laughs> and it's like what all right, <laughs> we're trying to have a mildly adult yeah, it's, it's it's fine. We get it. like it's weird to complain. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, and like I get it. You you came to a, a this in premise was originally kind of. It's like it goes back and forth. Sometimes we I suppose. Real <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but regardless, you didn't, you don't know, and usually we don't have this much back and forth with the comment section, so it's it's a weird thing all the way around. But again, Good. appreciate you being here. But also, it's like <laughs> uh, Aaron. In a, in a place yeah so. I, it's, i'm not i'm not in the mood for it um <laughs> maybe on another episode we could talk about those things or you can hit me in the private and she's gone all right that so works. You, we, <laughs> that's lee i i've seen her um lee lynn yeah i think it's lee lynn i've seen her at a mic i someone messaged me about her i can't remember but 
Until she came to mind, I had never, I never heard. I I knew I've heard of her. It's a whole whatever. We'll talk about it later. Um, but no, I'm in. A, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Lee, yeah, Leland, a uh, comedian that came to an open mic, came in and she kept asking Just being questions. annoying. <laughs> Aaron was talking about his traumas and Thanksgiving. And it's not that, like, questions are fine, but, like, they weren't on focus at all. And they were all, like, about, like, what I'm doing. Random. <laughs> so like, I was, I was like, okay, that's fine. Just time, like, time and place. Like, there's, there's like, I'm down to talk. You can hit me in the DMs. Yeah. That's fine. Jesus it's fucking just, Christ. She's annoying. She's, like, really irritating. Like, as a <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. You ever you ever been at a barbecue and a gnat is just getting in your fucking <laughs> Oh my god. Lee Lin? That really triggered you. Yeah. Fuck. No, I'm on record as saying kind of annoying. Um <laughs> No, she's good people. She's good people. But it's you just, think everyone's yeah. a good person, Zero. This is the yin yang. That is very true. That is the dynamic of the podcast. That is God damn. Works. Fucking aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> um what were we talking about? Uh, positive. Uh, Basically, positive. <laughs> now that now that the gnat has left the barbecue, I think I can go I back to being I positive. Think, I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. That's oh true. yeah, she's gone right now. She's, yeah, gone. she's gone. Thank Christ. I thank the Lord, baby Jesus. That's what I'm thankful for. Zero. That's what I'm going to say when we do our uh, prayers. I'm going to be like, uh, I'm so thankful that Leland's not at our Thanksgiving. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I'm being an asshole. I'm just not in a good mood. But <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not your fault. This is the wrong day. <laughs> any any other day, Aaron, he'll be in his feelings, but he'll like humor. Like if you came at the same time that Harrison came in and yeah. was doing like, yeah, <laughs> joking. Yeah, but Thanksgiving is not Aaron's holiday. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um. <laughs> I actually think I'm handling it pretty well, Zero. All things <laughs> this, is a good, this, this is a good one for me. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I guess ultimately, like, I'll survive. It is what it is. Hopefully, in the, by next year, I won't even have to be in the situation. And that's where I'm at. All right. Well, that's a way to deal with it. We learn, we grow, and hopefully, this time next year, you have evolved. By evolved, I mean moved. So <laughs> that'll be a thing. Um, let me think. It was the, the, you said you don't like food, so you don't have a favorite food at all. I have favorite fucking pizza and ch salad and shit. Like I have favorite <laughs> foods. Foods. No, no. Interesting. So you don't like ham? No, nah, I'm a vegetarian. You told me this. Yeah. I was like, I know there's a thing. I remember we had a whole episode about you and food, and I remember I was like, he doesn't like food because of the thing that people do with food. <laughs> like, I remember that. But I was like, what is, I know he eats. I'm like, I know he eats. <laughs> no, I'm a robot, Zero. I just take my sustenance from the sun. <laughs> yeah, you do photosynthesis. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that would be a plant. Anyway, that's what being a vegetarian is. It's taking sustenance through so photosynthesis from the sun. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay. I guess, that, again, that really, that tracks all too well. Um, what would you say is your favorite holiday? Christmas. Are you like a New Year's Eve kind of guy? Christmas. Oh. I love Christmas. Christmas is your favorite holiday? Yeah. Really? Okay, let's, there, there we go. Positive thing. We're going to end on a positive note. Why do you like Christmas? What are the positives about Christmas? Um, I like everything. Basically, all of the holidays I love in spirit and in theory, but I was around people that ruined them. So. Right. Especially now as I've gotten older, there's an appreciation for what Christmas is supposed to mean. And the time, I love the lights. I love it when it gets cooler. And I've, I experienced Christ California Christmas, which is a really nice weather. You know, as much mm -hmm. as I want to experience snow, California Christmas is pretty dope. Uh, oh, yeah. I love the smells of the candles, uh, like Christmas candles. I'm not a candle, man. I, I'm not. Man. I love the Christmas specials. I you like love, you like pine tree smell? Yeah, man. I uh, Christmas. I love starting to wear long sleeves and jackets. 
I love. I'll give you long sleeves. Long sleeves are pretty legit. Music or there's this one sweater that I got for Christmas yeah. by my ex, my ex step grandparents. I don't know where she kept finding these like sweaters, but every Christmas she would buy me a long sleeve sweater, and every single one, even though I know it was bought at a store, felt like it was knitted by some grandma in a wood cabin somewhere. Like it, it had the comfort and hugging warmth of like I called them my Cosby sweaters, which really got ruined by everything that he turned out to be. But like they are, they are the most like I would understand wearing those all the time if it wasn't hot all the time too. But like they're great, and so I love, I do enjoy a good Christmas sweater. Yeah, you were saying I just I would say Christmas because that is, and it is on a selfish. It is fun to get gifts when it doesn't. It be, yeah, when it doesn't feel like a, um, it's going to be used against you. It is fun to get gifts. It's fun to give gifts and see that person light up when you get them the right thing. Like, not a political move. Yeah, <laughs> when I don't feel like I'm running for office by getting like, something. Listen, we're we're going what to, what do you need from us this year? Yeah. To keep doing what we need you to do. <laughs> so, yeah, Christmas. What about you? Uh, my birthday. It's the most, it's even more selfish because I don't have to share it with anybody. It's literally my day for me about me. You know what? My birthday rivals my d dislike with Christmas. Or not Christmas, with Thanksgiving. It rivals. It rivals? Yeah, because, because I don't like, weirdly enough, I don't like all of the attention on me if I'm, unless I'm performing. Oh. Interesting. I, I, I don't like sitting there and everyone singing happy birthday. I don't like everyone staring at me. I don't like um, I don't like everyone feeling like. What, what is the difference for you from perform? Like why why is it okay in performance? Because I'm doing. There's a give and take. I'm doing something. I'm giving you something. You're giving me something. It's ah, so it's like earned. Yeah, yeah. And the birthday. I mean, what do you do when you sit there and everyone's singing for you and you're just like, eh, yeah, all right. <laughs> what I do? Me. Me. I guess when you uh, I guess when you love yourself. Me how much I'm good. <laughs> what? I was born? You're right, I do deserve this. Why isn't this more money? That's what I do on my birthday. That makes sense. What I do is nothing. I co I go home and I say, please don't. Please don't. Just don't. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Huh. I'm gonna have to get. Content. I'm gonna have to get ready for this hell. So I think. Uh, I think we should do. <laughs> I'm gonna go pray. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in the corner. Dear Jesus, please help me not to light my family on fire this year. I can't wait to do the episode for for a follow up about this. Where you find what happens. <laughs> the play, play out. This is before yeah. and after. Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then we'll have another. All right. So, so Christmas is going to be better. <laughs> like, so we're not going to do what we did there here. <laughs> or maybe we'll go, that was good. Let's keep that same energy for Christmas. <laughs> but we'll see. So, yeah, I'll let you go get prepared and all that stuff. I got to go check on my half of doing the Thanksgiving stuff myself. Um, all right. So, this is the salute. Uh, thanks for tuning in, you guys that decided to actually watch live stream, even Leland. <laughs> like, I appreciate you. And, I don't. Um, if you can find, <laughs> if you want, if you want, if you want to find us, I'm Zero Remsen. You can find me at on Instagram at zero underscore kr. And Carly comes in at the very end. <laughs> you can find me at zero underscore kr anime on Instagram and TikTok and on YouTube. Just search Zero Remsen. If you want to find Aaron Chase, you can find him at Aaron Chase ninety one. On Instagram, on TikTok, pretty much all the medias are the same. And you can find this podcast and every episode that we do on the Buddy System Comedy YouTube page. And I, you're probably already on it if you're watching at the point that you'll probably be watching it in the future. You're probably already there. So watch another episode. It's fun. Uh, in the meantime, in the green time, we appreciate you guys. Happy Thanksgiving, even though it's way too late by the time you see this. Later.